I am unashamed. What about you? So we're back. I'm still at the Southern Lair. I'm awaiting my family. We, Jace, we call the uh, the yearly family vacation. We call it for years. We've called it EBP. Everybody but Phil, because oh, yeah. Dad doesn't Dad doesn't go to the beach, but the rest of us go. Of course, we play golf and you know eat and have a good time. So I think this year here. it's E B P W. Yeah. I don't right. think Willie's going to be there for Willie is now playing the role of Phil will be Willie because I think this is the third year in a row that he's no showed our vacation. So really? I guess he's gotten too, he's gotten too big for us, Jay. I don't do vacations because my life is a big vacation. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, why would you go anywhere, Dad? I mean, you're you're living hey, the dream, right? That's it. <laughs> you ever just stop Phil and look around and say, "I'm on vacation." Yeah. <laughs> Yesterday, I'm looking at them Opelousas cat I caught. Caught there's five more in that net. And I, what'd I you do with them? Huh? Old Red was there. He took. Oh, I, I uh, kept one. Okay. Gave him four. Good grief. Old Jace got the short stick. <laughs> Jace but, is did dead. you figure Jace, out you whatever just... happened to the saw that you know was disappeared? Yeah, disappeared. Mm. About like them Opelousas cat. I had a chainsaw <laughs> down here, but it disappeared. Well, I had a, I spent, well, you know, this is unusual. Usually we film a couple of days during the week. I don't know how they distribute these podcasts, but we're doing a, a late. We're actually working a little ahead, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, we're working a little them. due to vacations and other, other where I'll be promoting the TV show at some point. So, uh, Yeah, that's but, coming well, soon, huh, Jace? It is. It's coming up next month. Or is this, yeah. is this still May? April, yeah, May, it's still June. May. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It may be June by the time this comes out. By the though. time this airs, we'll be starting to. You'll see a few promos here and there. So uh, don't go crazy. Lower your expectations, but it's good <laughs> family fun, which is a rarity on TV. This is well, a good. I fix fa- to say if you know y'all talk about vacations, I know, I'm just watch y'all on the birthdays, the child being birthed uh, in our family structure, but. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I don't know what's going on with this stupid thing. Here, stop the timer, Josh. Well, maybe he's got it fixed. All right. About 30 or 40 second delay. I would just say, uh, Al, as far as family structure is concerned, I don't, I don't know of any family... Uh, structure and now it's probably up in 40 something individuals this the Robertson clan uh, I know of no family structure that meets together as often as the Robertson crowd do, do you? Oh, I'm uh, sure there's some not. out there I mean, I mean, we do have the blessing <clears throat> of most of us, and now Jeff's coming I back. Mean, home, every so every we, birthday, we all live close to each other. every birthday is celebrated. Yeah. Well, last night, Miss, Missy and I were walking, and with the baby, and we stopped in at Willie's in-laws' house because Mamma Joe is she's I mean, she's in her nineties. Ninety-two, I think. She's ninety-two, and she's one of the most classy. Yeah. Even just has her wits uh people i've ever met in my life i love that woman and uh yeah, she's talking about a, a godly woman. woman proverbs what is that 31 maybe yeah Proverbs 31. so we Jay, she could have she could have thrived in any era you know what yeah. i'm saying like she could have thrived 100 years ago <laughs> 200 years ago you know she's just some people can thrive in any era and that'd be mammal joe well there's some people you know when you see class and character just combined and i it, it just i don't know i she she's a real real good mentor well, so I, just, but, uh, I don't see any uh any friction hard, no. hardly at all no well, the point i was gonna make though is when we stopped in because sometimes we'll stop in there and let her see the baby just talk and love on her and, but they had their whole family there i mean it was a crowd <laughs> <laughs> in there, but I thought oh, this is all right. This is their whole family. This was the Howard crowd. Yeah, they were they were having a meal together. I mean, it wasn't like I mean, it was Thursday night, 
I mean, that was at least 15 or 20 people in there eating, but uh, it was great. But what I was going to say, I got good news. Murray and I, we went on a on a little metal detecting run yesterday in Vicksburg, being led by the guy that you baptized Sunday that Murray had brought over. Oh, oh yeah, well, I saw it. Well, I, 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 we did, We had a discipleship day uh, yeah. yesterday because I talked to him about everything I knew about how to get started in the Lord every time I could think about it in between what we were doing. Of course, we didn't find anything good, and it was a jungle. We literally hunted the jungle in the summertime with hills almost you were we were almost unable to to climb i mean my biggest concern was if murray i was just trying to get him out of there in one piece we did it of course you know when we got home we there's a tick every five inches on my body i can say you get in the jungle Uh, jace there's stuff that uh, you take with you from the jungle you don't leave the jungle in the jungle so the seed ticks were there oh they're there and so we had to have body cavity searches during the night but <laughs> I feel pretty good about where well, i'm at right that's now that's a fun evening <laughs> no nah, no it's probably more information than you want to know but look this is life in this area if you go in the woods you're going to get some ticks on you see so well, he was a very home. heartfelt conversion well what i'm fixed to tell you i thought would make your day so here's what happened so we show up at one of his buddies place and you know, we're in the normal conversations, and uh, but I bring up real quickly to his buddy because I wasn't sure. You know, it's always awkward when you make a life change for the Lord. It's awkward to then go to your old friends and have this conversation that, okay, I'm I'm a different me. I mean, it, and right. I think everybody should do it, but, you know, we all know that's difficult. So I thought I'd do it for him. And so... You know, I introduced myself because he's he was gonna let us hunt his place, and so I so I just basically told well, he was a land owner over there. No, his buddy was. Oh, okay. You see what I mean? He just pulled up. I know him. He's my friend. Yeah. And so, uh, so I was like, "Yeah, we met. I told the story." So his buddy, he's looking around like, "Oh, we got a, you know, we got a coming to Jesus gathering here." You know. So mm. I planted that seed. Well, his daughter, the guy who owns the land where we're at, well, she was a fan of our, our little duck show. So she showed up. She had just graduated high school, but she real smart, 4.0, very ambitious, had a plan, very impressive woman. But she showed up because she just was a fan of the show. Well, she's like, well, what are y'all doing here? And I had some duck calls in my truck, and so I was signing her, sign her, sign her a duck call. And uh, I do that sometimes, but I was so impressed with her. She just, her goals in life and her being a good student and her plan. I I was just asking her what she was doing. I was like, and she drove out here. She was an example of there's still hope for America. I was really impressed. And so I thought, I got, I said, let me see if I got a duck call, sign you a duck call. So the guy you baptized, he's standing there. So as I'm signing the duck call, I write the gospel symbols on the duck call. Mm-hmm. Of course, I don't know her her status in life as far from a spiritual standpoint. But I said, well, you know, your dad's friend here, he just came to an understanding of this. Have you ever seen this? She was like, no, what is that? And so I go through the gospel, but I was using him. As an example, and this is, I'm telling you all this story because this is what we were talking about, about directional dialogue. And when you read Jesus on on how he was on a day-to-day basis, I was trying to do that in this situation. I've already already drawn a line in the sand with the buddy. Good thinking. Now, this is not Sunday. This is Thursday. You know, church is not gathering, but it really is. And and to, to my point, I think you need daily conversations about Jesus. So I was using one situation to get into a conversation with another. Mm -hmm. So I go through the gospel. This is not a long presentation. It was about a three minute explanation of who God is, how you got here, what Jesus did. It's the message. Yeah. But I'm doing it in light of this fellow, your dad's friend, just did this. 
Mm -hmm. And so I, I said, well, so what do you think about that? She said, can I do this too? I said, you sure can. Well, what She's you like, know? well, will your dad baptize me too? Because I just soon, if that's the going thing now, I just soon do that too. <laughs> I said, well, I'll line it up. Well, it, yeah. I, she said, well, I've been studying about this and I've been thinking. About, she was like, it's just a weird coincidence that I've really been thinking a lot about this. And then I come here and. She just comes out of the shadows and you've never seen her before. And she says, I don't know what yeah. exactly this. I can't. And look, we're literally in the middle of the woods out here. And she just was coming to take a picture. God and then smiled all this on happened. her. He smiled on her. So then I told Murray, oh, Murray, I saw he's getting all teary-eyed, you know, because he kind of set this in motion with a conversation with this guy. And uh, I said, well, Murray, I, I don't know if we're going to find anything today, which we didn't. I said, but I'm pretty sure this is the reason we've gathered here today. <laughs> so I thought it was really kingdom, encouraging. Kingdom, kingdom treasure was found on the jungle yep. treasure hunt. Yeah, <laughs> and I wasn't passing that off on you, but I'm going to be out of town Sunday, and she, so so I'm going to line that up for line you up. if you'll carry the torch. Line around. it up day or night, any but, day she wants. Yeah, I thought, well, she's just an impressive young woman. So, uh, But I said that because then I thought, you know, so I come home last night, and uh, Mia had been, I'm not sure where she had been the last two or three days. I should know that. But she had come back, and camp's fixed to start out there. And she's like, I, I'm having a bunch of my friends over tonight, so it's going to be noisy here tonight. She was telling me that. I was like, hey, you know, come on, come on, come on. But they all came. I bet there was two dozen young people at my house last night. And uh, so I told them that story about what had just happened. I said, I met somebody y'all's y'all's age today, and I told them the story, which was inspiring and they were mia and some of her friends were asked by the mayor the mayor of our town here to do a a song session at some event around here i mia said she had heard them singing somewhere their little they have a little group that, that sings mainly worship songs and she was impressed and uh so they were practicing some of their songs well what it turned out turned into now it was a thursday night once again not a sunday it turned into them about two dozen either seniors in high school or first couple of years of college just worshiping for, I'd say, three or four hours last night into the night. Uh, well, you know. Missy would come in there about every 30 minutes, and she said, now this is, all, this is what I'm talking about. This is awesome. You know, and I'd look in there, and they're world-class singers. Just It was just awesome. You mean these girls could sing? It's girls and guys. Yeah. yeah, it was it was awesome, but it made me think, you know, because we all had our hearts ripped out over this, you know, what happened with this school shooting and these kids Uvalde. and it, it, yeah, in Uvalde. Of course, it and I know it's been a while since that happened. By the time you're listening to this, but you know, it ripped our hearts out because we have a lot of friends from that area. I mean, the guy that married my wife and I, he's from Uf Uvalde. He actually and, uh, lives near there still uh, now. He's still down there because yeah. he went back, you know. And it's just, you know, I couldn't, I mean, I was mad and sad for three days. I mean, you know, it's just awful when you think of seven to 10 year olds, kids, this happening. But it just made me think in that moment last night when I was watching all these young people, I was like, now this is what we want to happen right here. And so when you try to try to work through that from a spiritual perspective, you realize, you know, it starts in the home. It starts in, you know, your identity and your community. And, you know, and that we all went through our teenage years when you have a breakdown of that combined with the fact that now we have this Internet and some of these young people who they're not sure of their identity they don't have their community. They don't have people holding them responsible and mentors, and they just they lose their way and they become so angry and want to do evil things. It's you know we got to we we have to address, in my opinion, this delusion that happens that they somehow can be famous in the world. You know, given this play by play of here's what I'm fixed to do. You know, on, on social media because uh, that was part part of that. And you know, it's interesting, Jace. Uh, let's take a break.
Now, Jace, I don't know if you realize this, but did you know that two out of three guys experience hair loss before they're 35? Did you know that? I didn't know that. I missed that stat. Yeah, and it's because we're, we're hairy guys, right? Uh, so, But a lot of guys don't want to gamble with their hair, and you can flip the odds in your favor, especially if you're young and you're experiencing you know baldness at a young age, uh, if you go to one of our long-term sponsors, Keeps, K-E-E-P-S. Um, we all realize hair loss can be tough. Nobody likes looking at the pictures and then have to go the old buzz cut. Uh, so check these guys out. They've got a clinically proven FDA approved hair treatment that's available online. Um, they have a physician uh, that's going to help you select the right products and also is going to be available for you 24 uh, seven if you have any questions. So there's no waiting rooms, no pharmacy visits. It's delivered straight to your door at about half the cost, which is a good deal. So uh, if you're, Getting tired of the balding jokes, join thousands of guys who have saved their hair. Go to keeps.com slash door. You're going to get 50% off your first order. Keeps, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash door. It's interesting because you're right. The common thread on the last few of these mass murders in schools have been teenage males. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that's the common thread. And then the social media thing has been a part of it every time. I mean, it's like, here, you know, almost like an announcement. Here's what I'm about to do. And, and then they go and do these heinous things. And it's, I don't know, it, you're right. It's, it's very here's troubling. What's ironic about it. Just a short little thesis here. I went and I looked up while I was watching the people who pontificate about this horrific event. And I looked up and I counted them. Over 70, 75 scriptures in the Bible. 75 times. Demon, demon possession, the evil one. And that, and that was just a start. It was more than that. And... First John 1, verse 11, uh, chapter 3, verse 11. This is the message you heard from the beginning. You can start at the front of the Bible and go all the way to modern day. This is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. And you look at this dastardly act, you say, what, what is going on? And it's becoming more and more common. Do not be like Cain. He goes back to the first murder recorded in this Bible, which is a thick one. There's a lot of carnage throughout the Bible. But, but this one here, you should not be like Cain. He's going back to the original first murder. The first thing John said, who belonged to the evil one. Now, if you belong to someone, he's he's taken you in. So they, they uh, our current culture says, oh, what you know, so you're saying the devil made him do it. You said, that's pretty well it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah that's, that's, the way, that's the way it works. He belonged to the evil one and he murdered his brother, which is what happened the other day at that school. Why did he murder him? Because everybody's saying, what, what's going on wrong? He's uh, mentally ill. He's, they come up with these things. But I'm just giving our listeners a glance. Look in your Bible every time demons or demon possession are there. And look at what these people who were wrestling with the demon, look at the sins they were committing. And murder keeps coming up. In fact, John recorded Jesus saying, the devil is the father of murder. Don't be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. Why did he murder him? Here's, here's how, you know, hard to figure out it is. Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Abel didn't do anything. He, 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 yeah. he gave, glorified God by giving him... His, his, uh, his, what, what would you call that? His, 
his offering. The, the, yeah, his the first offering. fruits of his. And, and, he was giving him the best. And yeah, and I Cain, mean, you're right. He he was killed for being good. And he was downcast. Cain was, and, and the Genesis account, where John wrote this in First John three, the Genesis account, is that uh, uh, up until that point, that that he was downcast in spirit. He's he's sitting there. He's looking at the ground. Cain is. And God told him, sin is crouching at your door. You yeah. must master it. So he even got a warning from God, but he said, and if for all you people who make a joke out of that, oh, it's just a joke, demon possession, demons, and, de and Jesus casting out all these demons while he was on the earth. Oh, that's all that Bible stuff. This Bible stuff makes perfect sense to me. Well, the reason you're saying that and the reason that that we can say this together is because i mean i know all three of us has spent hours and hours and hours with hundreds and hundreds of young people in different scenarios yep. over the last 30 or 40 years and look i've come home before after talking to whether it was guys in a in a uh not a prison but like like a prison you know rehab with yep. with uh with bars i guess and because they're just they're trying to get somebody to talk to them. So I've done that numerous times. And I've told Missy several times I've come home before and I said, you know, met a guy today. And I mean, that was that was scary. I mean, you just see it in their eyes. They're so yeah. bitter and they're so angry and they've had so much pain in their life and they're mad at the world. Of course, I'm trying to have a conversation to start a spark using godly principles jesus specifically but to say look there there's there's a way out of this and uh but don't ever doubt i've seen it from time to time I, i've just thought do you know when someone gives themselves to that anger and rage and and their evil thoughts i mean it it becomes monstrous and we and we've had numerous conversations so my, the whole reason for me saying this, what led to this conversation, because people are, you know, they're rightfully so. They're so filled with emotions, you know, just in the short term when this happens, because it is horrible. But and you're like, what do we do about this? What do we do about it? What do we do about this? And I, I, I just I go back to that. The press conference that I listened to when one of the news media, they were trying to politicize the thing right out the gate you know, about gun control and different things. But they asked him a question. They're like, well, why is there a, a law on the books that an 18-year-old can go buy this gun and then shoot a school? And and he said, well, that law's been on the books, the governor said this, you know, for over 60 years. And the first, I'm paraphrasing what he said, but he's like, the first 50 years or so, it never was a problem. So something has obviously changed where now you're seeing this as a problem. And whatever that change is, that's what we need to address. No Which I, other, I thought it was a really a valid yeah. point, though. Yeah, no, no it, 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 there was no instruction. There was no father there. I mean, if you shoot your own grandmother or harm her in any way, it could have been just the same thing, picked up a baseball bat and beat her to death. But... When you see that, you say, did he get any biblical instruction, any love when he was coming up and growing into manhood? I mean, the mother right. was a drug addict and the father was I, no one. That's, don't even, I haven't even heard his name. Well, so that's he, why I said it starts. And with, at 18, but, it, but the foundation is the family. But, Phil, I say it's got to be, you know, from a community is the next thing. I mean, the whole purpose of the church is to seek out people who have fallen through the cracks which is why i led this whole thing with this conversation you know i had a young woman come up who's a fan so i feel like i got some leverage i didn't know her story she could now when i heard her story i was impressed with her but i'm saying i'm looking at this like well what if she's got some problems or what you know let's have a, a discussion about jesus as a as a member of the body out here on a thursday and then last night, all those those college age group that met together at my house, you don't know people's hearts and where they're at. But I thought I have an opportunity here to be a mentor, to give them direction, to 
be an influence because you don't know if there's been a breakdown at the home. So, but you know, last night, and I want to, I want to share this story because I was really moved by this. But hang on, Jess. Let's take a break. So we're Missy and I are, you know, we're doing our best to be leaders with that crew last night and look for conversations. And of course, they're all looking around, and we got this little baby, and they're like. None of them really wanted to ask. They were asking around the situation. It's kind of like, I mean, aren't y'all in your 50s? And they, because they, one of them said, Is this your grandbaby? And Missy's like, No. <laughs> so, you know, they, they just can't help it. They're like, Well, huh, what, why do you have this baby? Y'all adopted? No, it's, it's, it's complicated. So Missy tells them the story of what we're doing, which, by the way, is the same thing. You know, we're standing in the gap because we don't want this kid to grow up without any nurturing and any any structure, any discipline, that, any. Well, right. So it, it's you're you're standing. This is what we we do in our community. But look, it takes a lot of work, a lot of money, a lot of energy, a lot of passion. All this, we, especially dealing with young people once they get teenagers, it's uncomfortable. And but we need those conversations in our community because the world on one side, think about what they're doing. They're confusing identity. They're trying to segregate everybody into little little clans. They're dividing everybody and wherever, you know, what you look like, what color you are, where you're from. Well, some people are, are getting in the cracks of all that because they don't have a community. You've confused their identity on how they got here or whether they're, you know, what, what sex they are. And so then they go through the difficult time of their teenage years. And if you throw in some pain, abuse and some neglect especially from from you know the other teenagers if they're uh you know if they're kicked out of their their little clan or whatever based on the differences it snowballs down the road and then they're like well hey i know one way i can be famous why don't we do this anger they're looking for and they're scaring everybody to death because they're going to stomp on the second amendment but why don't we just uh pass a law the law that we took away where you can't uh, have anything in the Bible when you're being instructed in our school systems, why don't we reinstate it's okay to look at what the Bible says about demon possession, murder, rape, robbery, stealing, good and evil. Why don't we reinstate that in our school system where at least the people, the majority of these young people could at least hear this is one possible thing. Uh, you, there may be a uh, the the great God we call Jesus who became flesh and died for us. We're counting time by it. Why don't we take a look at Jesus in the school system and make these people at least have a knowledge of it and leave it up to them whether they want to follow Jesus or not. What's yeah. the downside <coughs> to reinstating God in our school system? I don't, you know, I it's don't interesting. get it. It's interesting, Dad. Out of all the commentary I've heard, I, I hadn't heard anybody say that. Me either. <laughs> I hadn't heard well, anybody, and I hadn't heard anybody say, you know what, why don't we just I mean, why don't we why bring you, the Bible? Why out? are you so afraid to put Bible, uh, biblical instruction and in training people and discipline them? Why wouldn't you let that go where we can teach that to our children? Well, I will say this, because I listened to that press conference. The lieutenant governor, I, I'm sorry I forgot his name. He did say that. He he did say He, he said, hey, I until it. we get back putting God in the center of our lives, this, this stuff, and in our schools and in our culture, that you're going to continue to see this kind of stuff. So I will give him credit for saying that. Uh, what I was going to say is, though, is so we're having these conversations, and Missy's giving the explanation on why we're standing in the gap with this, this baby. Well, one of the teenagers said, well, I'm 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 really thankful y'all are doing this. And she told her story. She said when I was uh, when my mom gave birth to me, she not in this country, by the way. Uh, she just took her and left her on somebody's doorstep, and uh, she wound up going to an orphanage. And long story short, some American American couple adopted her and brought her over here. Well, now I'm just looking at her life. Well, she's fixed to go out and as a counselor teaching young people about the Lord and but from her perspective 
and she t- look the w- when she gave her her story it, the most common phrase was the lord has been really good to me the lord has been really good he's used other people to take care of me and, and put them in my life and i just thought okay this is what i'm talking about that and that is the answer i i think whenever something we have something you- like this happens i think the church has to rise up and realize look if you're waiting on the government to try to figure out what the problem is and how to correct it mm-hmm. that's a bad idea uh, how we're going to correct it is churches rising up in our communities and looking for the most troubled teenagers who have fallen through the cracks of society on on down to kids that are being neglected and that that's how we combat that that's all we can do i mean inside our family structure i will say that my nephew judy my sister her one of her sons there was two of them two other sons and a daughter but he hanged himself in a jail cell 20 miles down this road the entire time leading up to that i'm trying to get him off a of fentanyl well he was you hear a hundred and something thousand died from the, these drugs. Well, that's what got Just him. Last year. And, and I tried everything I could for a year going into that. He knew the Bible verses, but he didn't put them into practice. So, I mean, it's, it, it was heartbreaking. I mean, he hanged himself in his jail cell, highly intelligent, yeah. graduate of LSU, CPA. He had all of his life. We got him a job. He's making 50 grand a year. So we got him on his feet, but he still hanged himself. Yeah. Couldn't, but the point is, it, you try, I mean, you know, you were trying, yeah, it doesn't mean they're all, it, it, that's right. I mean, bad things are going to happen. I mean, just write it down. It is good and evil in the how battle. How old was Trey, uh, uh, how old he was, was about, he? He was about 51 when he yeah. committed suicide. Yeah. But yeah, it was a front row seat to spiritual warfare. I mean, you saw the hills and valleys and, there's no doubt there was demonic influence on his oh. life and he couldn't, you know, he gave into it and ultimately it cost him his life. And I definitely think that's what you have to do with anything that we see now. You know, it's interesting because I hear a lot of politicians coming up with ideas, but it, it's really just a result of cultural rot yep. for 60 years. I mean, yep. it's, it's a stepping back of godly principle. And then you, you wonder why you wind up where we are, but we see it clearly. I mean, it's it's demonic. Satan is it's called satanic. the father of lies and the father of murder, and it has taken hold, and we're doing it to ourselves. And there's Jesus in the middle of it, hiding in plain sight, and the devil. Anybody who lives his life and looks around and can't see good and evil and the, what makes the difference, Jesus on one side and Satan on the other, I, I don't know what to tell them. I mean, they're like, oh, that doesn't even apply. I said, it doesn't apply. I mean, what, how many murders is it going to take before y'all wake up and say, I think maybe evil is real? Yeah. Well, that's what Colossians 3, you know, we're, we're, that's where we're at in Colossians 3. And it, he, it's interesting that the, he has the dividing line of the old self, and he puts it in that light with Jesus yep. in the center of the old self and the new self. But it has all the categories on what you see on one side and what you see on the other. That's it. So the you, food of when, all when of you it. read, when you read the, and look, and this was even happening in the church. He's not even talking about the world, huh. but he says you're acting. Because, because like, that's, that's how progressive it gets. Let's take a break. Dave. Yeah. All right, go ahead. But some of the things in those categories, like, you know, when, he, he lists some of the sins, you know, sexual immorality, impurity and lust and evil desires and greed. And because of these things, God's wrath is coming in these ways you used to live. You know, the fact that you can come out of that is the whole point of what we're saying. But, it, you know, so well, how, how are you going to come out of that? It's conversations, Christ in you especially with young people, especially those who have had pain in their life or abuse or, and, you know, they're mad and, and you're giving them a way, a person, a being that will provide a way out 
out for them. But then you see where it leads but to. Think it about says, it though, Jace. Jace, think about this. Let me interject this thought in. Because in light of this conversation about the shooting and everything happened there and the reactions to it, leading into chapter three, remember the last part of chapter two, Paul does a whole segment about freedom, freedom in Christ. In other words, mm -hmm. this is so good. He set us free. And then he talks about, remember all those things inside. Don't, don't be bound by other people and the new moon celebrates. He spends this whole thing talking about do not handle, do not touch. It's about freedom. And then he comes back and starts describing what happens to people who are free. I mean, then you have a choice. Do I live one way or do I live in Christ? Because I put that old stuff to death. But what you've heard in response, what, what do you keep hearing from people about how we're going to fix school shootings? More law. We need more laws. Mm -hmm. We've got to get more laws because if we can legislate it's not going to do it. The, it's, it won't do it. It's the same it's actually human the reaction <laughs> every time. It's the opposite. And so in freedom, we realize we made a choice to put to death. And that's why he starts talking about, you know, here, here's your new mind. Here's your new heart. Here's your new soul. And this is what you do. And you don't do it because of law. You do it because of Christ. And so I, I just found it interesting that his, his um, teachings in this book are exactly what we need in our current culture. Well, yeah, we have to have a death I agree. And all the laws are dealing with physical things, which, look, I mean, everybody knows how, you know, where we stand on that. But you also got that passage in 2 Corinthians says the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. And he was talking about things that control the mind, the spiritual side of things. We have a way more powerful weapon in that. What we have in the message of Jesus and the grace he offers, which which then gives people identity. It gives them a community. It gives them people that hold them accountable. You just think about the system. It gives, you know, value to their lives. I mean, going back to this girl who was adopted. I mean, just think how how angry could you be when you realize you get older and you realize that your mom gave birth to you and just left you on somebody else's doorstep? Well, that, that, that's a hard thing to deal with. Yep. So you got two choices. You can be mad at the world because nobody bitter. loves you. And yeah, you can be bitter, or you can realize that God had a, had a bigger plan in mind, sent you a couple who were out there, with the armed with the love and grace of God, there were, there were weapons who saw a, a value in that God gives life to everyone, takes this girl in and loves on her and teaches her the good things about God that we, you know, that are available. And then you look up and she's doing the very thing that's stopping the violence that you see out here today in the lives of young people that that's why it hit me on that you know this is when our camp the week that the camp started there's hundreds of young people that go through there and you say why are you doing that kind of stuff well we're doing it because it's the right thing to do but you're also you're standing in the gap where those kids that are coming where the home has broken down and whatever else that's happened in their life you're you're having a moment here that God is using you so that they can go from the old self to the new self, which is what our society needs. Yeah, they don't look at it as a war. The world doesn't, but the, Paul had it right in 2 Corinthians 4. Since through God's mercy, God loving us enough to send Jesus to die for us, to be buried, we have this ministry. Whether you like it or not, all of us have to participate in a ministry we do not lose heart because it's it's a tough thing to watch all this carnage as we're doing this we've renounced secret and shameful ways we do not use deception nor we do we distort the word of god on the contrary by setting forth the truth plainly we commend ourselves to every man's conscience everyone knows that there's good and evil out there. A lot of them act like they don't or say they don't, but we, we, we appeal to their conscience in the sight of God. 
And even if our gospel is veiled, Jesus' his death, burial, and resurrection for the world, it's veiled to those who are perishing. I mean, it's spiritual warfare. The God of this age, that's Satan, the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who's the image of God. We don't preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ is Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. God said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. We have it's like you. You're a treasure hunter, Jace. We have, and it was proven the other day with that little girl showing up, we have this treasure in jars of clay and, and bodies made from the dust of the earth to show that all this surpassing power is from God and yeah. not, not from us. You were out there hunting treasure. God sent you this girl. He said, oh, by the way, Jace, I want this one. And you, she looked up. And you wrote these symbols down that represents Jesus coming. She heard it. She says, that's what he did. He says, that's what he did Sunday morning. And she said, she brought it up. Well, why don't we do that? Let's, yeah, she said, can I do that? Why don't I do that? Well, I mean, I wanted to talk it's about. It's a wonderful story. Yeah, I wanted to talk about this. Cause Hang I, on, Jace. Let's take our last break. I think the problem is people don't realize the preventive nature of God-loving, Jesus-centered people. They don't realize what's being prevented when you're in the lives, especially with their young people. I mean, I ha when I look back, because I just reflected on the life of all the people I've talked to, young people across the world, you know, there was two that stood out in my mind when I thought of, on the very worst that I ever had conversations with. One was a female, one was a male. I mean, where it's like there's nothing you can do with these people. Now, one of the, the, the girls, she was in the church. And look, I spent a couple of years trying to help her. And to my knowledge, she hasn't hurt anybody. So I'm, I'm happy, but she never surrendered to the Lord. But I, I just poured as much love, devotion. And look, she had been abused and, and just had had a r very rough life. But I feel like, well, it was something. The other one was a male who was my neighbor. And y'all have heard me tell this story before, but, and I carried him around for a couple of years. Y'all probably remember that, but he was the guy who threatened me. He was standing in my yard. I pulled up. I was like, hey, what are you doing in my yard? But he was he would cut through my yard. He would walk through, through it and go get drunk with some of my neighbors. But I didn't know he was a kid because he was about 6'4", 320 pounds, huge, massive. <laughs> and uh, so he, I said something to him, and he just, just went just a withering barrage of f bombs and I'll kill you and you and your wife and I mean that he's just hollering in my yard, so I just bum rushed him because I thought you know I'm not going to take a cussing in my own yard. I don't care who you are. <laughs> well, it, it and you weren't it you, and you didn't him. think his size <clears throat> his size didn't intimidate you know what? You in, in the, the moment, moment I didn't care. I just took no. off running right at him. And just got right up in his grill. I was watching him to see if he was going to reach for a weapon because I wasn't armed. But I just thought, I mean, it made me angry. I mean, he's threatening me and my wife, you know. Well, when I looked at him in the face, I'm like, this is a kid. I said, how old are you, son? And he was like 15 because I scared him when I run up there and got in his face, you know. I said, 15. I said, what's, what's your ambitions in life? He said, prison. <laughs> I said, prison? Oh my. That's what he said his That's ambition what he said. was? He said, I'm going to be the big dog in prison. So long story short. That's the kind of mind that, that hurts others. Well, look, yeah. the, the, uh, that's what I'm fixed to share what happened over, you know, a few years. So long story short. Now, look, it was bumpy. And, I mean, he was a thug that could, and he was living with his grandma. Parents nowhere around. He showed me his arsenal of weapons that were downright frightening what he had oh, i yeah. mean from nine millimeters to sawed off you were whatever. looking at, at the, the seed bed drugs of, as far as you could see you know so i enter his world he enters my world and it 
it took a couple years before he ever came to the Lord. And, uh, and it was bumpy because he was really hard to get, uh, you know, I was real careful about getting him around other people, especially young people. Cause he did more of the influence and, you know, he was this handful now, but he had no direction in his life. Me, but he was scared of me because I wasn't scared of him. I mean, it, it's like in his plan to go to prison, you know, I just kept saying, that's the dumbest thing. But, you you know, you're where whatever thought process that has led you here, because he was looking at it like, well, I get three meals a day. Well, think you about know, it. I lay around and watch TV. Yeah, think about it, Jace. What if you, a son of God, had not met someone controlled by Satan, him? What if, yeah. what if you hadn't, your past well, had Well, that's what gone. I was getting to. Now, look, it's not a happy ending. He 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 died in a, in a freak accident that I later on found out. But as I look back on that, I thought, now, this guy was headed toward something really bad because yep. he was armed. Now, he didn't go buy those guns, but he had a small, I mean, he had a small arsenal. Oh, where he got all that stuff? And he was mad at the world. He was threatening people. I mean, even like me, that's how we met is he was threatening my life. He had no fear of that. But I took him under my wing and look. Did he die in a gunfight or did he just somehow? No, it was he did die. He got hit. He was walking down the side of the road and somebody ran over him because he, you know, he didn't have a vehicle. But uh, but you know what? In a way, I mean, I was sad he lost his life, but I was actually happy that he did make a, a move with the Lord and he didn't hurt anybody. He at least, you know what I mean. He, he, I think it was a preventive thing that happened when I look at no it from a godly it. perspective. But, uh, but I'm saying you don't hear those stories, and that was one that I could notice that okay, we, you know, that I, the Lord, He was living right beside me. So I mean, I was thrust into the situation. I'm not going to be bullied around by by anybody and threatened but well when i noticed that it was a kid i realized we have a breakdown in society here and he's living right next to me Jace, that, that guy that did all of that that young buck the other day the 18 year old if somebody like you could just possibly have run up on him it might have been a different well, outcome I, that's what i'm saying or anybody and, and look if the guy would have turned because there was, when I'm saying it was bumpy for those couple of years, I mean, the, the guy was breaking the law, and but he's not even a, he's not even 18 years old. But I thought, well, what do you do? And I got a lot of advice from other people on, on how to deal with this guy. And it was very difficult. There are people who have stayed at our house way back. They stayed there for about a week or two biblical instruction. I don't know where they came from, how they ended up there, but they're there. As far as I could tell, they didn't have a vehicle and all that, but I tried my best to get them to turn. They left our house after a couple of weeks and murdered an 80-something-year-old woman yeah. up here in West Monroe. Yeah, I remember when that happened. Well, it's like... And that's me trying uh, with everything I could muster to get them to see that they yeah. were the the truth will set you free, number one from Satan, sin, yeah. guilt, law, and the grave. I was trying to get him to understand. Well, that. it's our best option, is what I'm saying. It, you know, and I think we got to when things like this happen, we got to rise up. You know, as a the society, church does need but, to be more active. But I than think that. the church has has to rise up. Look, and you get there's a lot of older people, and I mean my age, who you know, don't have a lot going on. And I'm saying there, there's an avenue. You're not going to run out of potential people to help. No. I mean, I probably of all the things that I do in, in trying to let the Lord use me or give back to my com community, it involves that age group from 12 to 20. Cause you, you, you remember being a teenager? Look, I mean, we all lose our minds during, during that time. Well, especially if you got added problems in there that was not your fault yep, or, or you know, the result of your parents, but the evidence yeah. shows without a, what they call it, nuclear family, without a godly family, I tell well, you, or just without a family, yeah. I mean, it, it it's. And then the godly principles, yes. I mean, but there's there's a lot of a lot of bad things going on out there. And look, 
it, there's no easy way to do it. It's like that's a great story that happened with me and that, that kid that was a thug. But it was really difficult, like, because he was terrified. I mean, my wife was terrified of him, and rightfully so. And I would get him in that house. It's, it's, and, uh, it's not a governmental fix. No. And look, it's I tried to get not, that not. kid involved in sports because he was big and he was athletic. I was like, dude, you could be playing on Sundays in the NFL. But I tried that. But guess what? He got out there and he hurt people. He Anything he could do that was not. I mean, he just like he's not going to play within the rules. I had to get off yep. that because, yep. I mean, he just sucker punch him. You know, you turn your back on him. He hits you in the back of the head. He was yep. a mean, violent, young, young lad. But and and. So that's why I'm saying he did a lot of things in the process that were wrong and that was upsetting and it caused a lot of apologies. And I took a lot of flack over it because they're like, you know, what are you doing with that guy? I mean, he's hurting people. I'm like, yeah, I know. That's why I'm trying to prevent this from happen, yep. happening. So I, I just saw it with that one kid <clears throat> that turned out to be, you know, a positive thing because he didn't shoot him shoot people with his guns. The age-old struggle, Jace, good and evil. It's a... But you know, I knew that boy for years, Al, and he never did. He was so bitter about the things that happened. He never would tell me what exactly caused the rage and the... Because I knew it was there. I mean, that was evident. He never would would share that way. He needed to. If you'd have been able to crack that part of it you you might he might have got to healing before he before he moved on all right we're out of time but i have a theory about infamy i want to talk about in the uh ot segment to kind of finish this discussion so we'll see you on the other side thanks for listening to the unashamed podcast help us out by rating us on itunes and don't miss an episode by subscribing on youtube and be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.